As we uh, await the arrival of Coach Altman, um, remember no videography in the interview room, no flash photography here in the interview room, and when you ask your question, we have microphones on both sides. Please wait for the microphone to come to you and state name and affiliation. And just so you know, uh, the Oregon News Conference will last for approximately 12 minutes, Michigan for approximately 10. Coach and student athletes will stay on, ta on stage the entire time. Okay, we're now joined by um, the Oregon Ducks. Head coach is Dana Altman. Student athletes tonight, Jordan Bell and Tyler Dorsey. Coach, congratulations on your victory and we'll turn to you for an opening statement. Uh, I'm really happy for the guys. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a great game. We knew Michigan was a very talented team and um, you know, those threes, uh, you know, got him back in there. I thought we had a little cushion there, uh, five points, and then two possessions. Uh, a game changed really quick. Um, but I thought, uh, you know, Tyler got us going the first half and, and kept us going. And, uh, and then Jordan, you know, we missed a lot of free throws. Nine for 16 usually spells disaster at this time of year. And uh, fortunately, Jordan cleaned that up and, and put it in and got us uh, – close again and uh, then Tyler hit a big basket. So really happy for our team. Uh, but I've got you know, a lot of respect for, for Coach Beeline in Michigan. And uh, uh, you know, I thought it was a great game. Uh, both teams played really hard. At, at times it wasn't uh, real smooth, but uh, they took away some of the things we wanted to do. And, and I thought there were a few times we took some of the things that they wanted to do away. So uh, good ball game. Thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions, again, for Coach or any of the student athletes. First question, microphone will go on this side and then to the right. Guys on your extreme left. Uh, Neil Best from Newsday. For Dana, did you consider fouling them again? Could you add another foul to give on that last play? And also for the coach and the players, could you talk about what you were thinking and doing as Walton's coming down there you know, for that last shot? Yeah, we were supposed to foul. Um, Dylan Ennis uh, had an opportunity there. As little upset that he didn't. Uh, fortunately, the ball didn't go in. But uh, yes, to answer your question, uh, we still had another two fouls to give. I think we were at four. And uh, I knew we had at least one to give, you know. And, and uh, we had the opportunity. Jordan fouled the first time uh, on the free throw. We told him that they had an opportunity to foul. We had a couple to give. And, uh, and we still had those fouls to give. So yes, we wanted them to foul. Could you all talk about that, what that last play? Yeah, um, after I fouled him, I, I didn't know the foul count. And he was like, good. He's like, if you have a chance to do it again, do it again. So I got my guys together. Let, I let them know, only do it. Make sure like the guy's not going up for a shot. We don't give him my and one or two free throws. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. We were supposed to foul. And um, Dylan didn't end up fouling. And we got fortunate that um, step back shot came up short. OK, let's go to our right. Uh, Mark Tracy uh, from the New York Times. Uh, Jordan, uh, big enough play that Coach even uh, mentioned it in his opening address, that, that rebound off the missed free throw uh, and then the putback. How, can you take us a little through how you kind of got in there to get the ball and if that's something you in particular practice or if it's just one of those, one of those things? Yeah, we have a play that we practice on, a, uh, in this case, uh, one of us missed free throw. So we executed it perfectly. Um, I think it was Tyler, Dylan, Dylan Brooks. Um, he went in and crossed. He uh, caused them to look at him. I just pushed my guy out the way, grabbed the rebound, went straight up with it. Okay, let's go on the left side toward the back. David Smale, Sports Exchange. Coach, welcome back to Kansas City. Thanks. How nerve-wracking is a game like that, neither team led by more than six? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's a competitive ball game while, while you're in the game. You know, you, you don't think about it much. You know, it's just one play, you're getting ready for the next play. Um, you know, there's frustration when you give up an easy basket. Uh, feel pretty good when you, when you execute something and get a good look. Um, but during the game, uh, I don't know, you don't really think of, of that. Uh, uh, but then afterwards, you know, you think of all the little plays that, that could have happened and, 
it wears on you pretty good. But uh, no, it was, like I said, it went back and forth. Uh, Tyler got us those big buckets right before half to give us a lead. Uh, you know, I looked here, you know, we led for about 24 minutes and they led for about 10 and, and it was tied for the rest. So uh, it did go back and forth. We couldn't shake them. And like I said, we had the five point lead and I thought, you know, we were pretty good. And then back to back threes just uh, really turned the game. In the middle on coach's right. Henry Bushnell, Yahoo Sports. Coach, what went into the decision to alternate between defenses, between that sort of half court trap and just the normal uh, half court man? And what, like, how did you decide when to switch between the two? That's what we do all the time. You know, that's um, kind of how we play. We, uh, we little press, back zone, and uh, some man to man. And we chart it out and see which one's going the best. And uh, a lot of times I ask the guys, you know, down the stretch, what they want to play, what they feel most comfortable with. So, uh, but we like to, you know, start the ball game and chart it out and, and just see what's more effective on, on any particular night. So it was more pre-planned rather than adjusting to what they were doing? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's the way we start every ball game and then, then we make adjustments uh, depending on how the game's going. We'll move to coaches left on the front. Hey, Coach Aaron Sports here at Sprint Center. You've coached a lot of games in Kansas City going back to your big eight days. You said this is going to be your first game coaching at Sprint Center. Speak to the atmosphere and just your time out on the floor for the first time. I'll tell you what, we, we've had three unbelievable venues to play in here. Uh, the new building in, in uh, Las Vegas is outstanding. Sacramento last week, new venue, uh, outstanding. I've watched ball games in here, but uh, never been behind the scenes. But this is a great facility. And uh, we've, we've been treated so well here. Uh, the police escorts and everything makes the guys feel pretty good. And uh, uh, so it, uh, people have been great. The facility's great. Uh, you know, Kansas City's so experienced at hosting these things that uh, uh, they really set a high standard. They've done a great job. Okay, here on the left, middle aisle. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports. Dana, Michigan's kind of written its story coming on late and, and getting to this point. How would you describe you guys right now without doing this without Chris? Well, I feel really bad for Chris uh, just because it's tearing him up. Uh, he wants to be out there so bad and help his teammates. Uh, so I, I really feel bad for him. Uh, fortunately, the guys have, have made a few adjustments. We've got some good minutes out of Cavell. Uh, other guys have stepped up. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we've been able to make the adjustment and uh, move forward. Uh, but I do feel terrible for Chris. He's, he's a wonderful young man. He's been fun to work with the last two years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to see him sitting over there on the bench, you know, wanting to be involved and, and not being able to. Okay, left side toward the back. Dana, uh, Danny Jones from the Columbia Tribune. You've been coaching for a long time, and now you're going back to your uh, to second consecutive Elite Eight. Just what's this like for you? How special is it to, to go back for the second straight year? It's, it's an unbelievable feeling. Uh, I owe these guys so much, uh, you know, for, for putting us in this position. Uh, as a coach, um, you know, you always dream of, of, of playing in the Final Four and, and uh, winning. A national title, and um, you know, I feel really fortunate to have really good players who have who have put us in that position. Uh, a great administration, a great school that has backed us all the way. Um, so, I feel really fortunate. Um, but yeah, you know, long time. I'm getting old, and uh, you don't know how many years you got left. And uh, uh, and and you got to be a little lucky. You know, that that shot could have went in. You know, there could be John and B -line, Coach Beeline and, and uh, the Michigan players up here. Uh, you know, that's how tight that game was. It could have went in either way. But I'm, I'm really fortunate. I'm really fortunate to, to have you know, Jordan, you know, for three years and Tyler for two and, uh, you know, Dylan Brooks. I mean, we, we've just been really fortunate. We've, we've gotten really good players and, uh, and guys that are unselfish. They, they want to win. They're competitive. You know, we got down four there, and you know, guys could have gave in to it, three or four. You know, and they didn't. You know, they they fought their way back. So, shows you what kind of competitive spirit they've got. Have time for maybe uh, three more minutes of questions. Are there any questions for our student athletes? Go toward the back on the left. 
uh, for coach and for the student athletes, just first blush thoughts about your next opponent, whether it's Purdue or Kansas? Well, we know Purdue's really big, um, and, and Kansas is, you know, is Kansas. And, um, uh, you know, obviously you, you look out there and uh, there's a little green section and there was a little dark blue section and then the royal blue filled everything else, you know. So, uh, you know, if it's Kansas, it'll be a tough ball game because it's a road game. And if it's Purdue, it's going to be awfully tough because they're big, you know, and, and uh, we're missing Chris. and. Cavell's going to have to really strap it on, and we're, we're going to have to match some of their size. But uh, we look forward to the challenge. It's an opportunity to play. So uh, they're both both really good teams, both very well coached. And, uh, you know, we'll watch this game and then start figuring out who we play. Jordan, you want to respond? Um, yeah, like Coach said, they're uh, obviously two very good teams. They made it this far uh, in the season. Um, Purdue has really good bigs inside. Kansas, their guards are really scrappy, can shoot. Um, they have a uh, candidate for player of the year, so either game's gonna be really tough. Yeah, like he said, Purdue, we know he, they're big, um, they're scrappy, and Kansas has great guard play, and um, both of us, it's gonna be a great matchup, and I'm excited to watch it, and whoever we get, we gotta get back and get prepared and um, focus on whoever wins. All right, question on the far right. Ian Eklund, Associated Press Broadcast. This is for both the players. In a, such a tight game, especially down the stretch, what's going through your heads? Just do whatever you can to win. Um, me, just my mindset is just get every rebound, um, offense or defense. Um, just try to help my team out as much as possible. Um, when it came down to us, just getting the big stop at the end. and. Um, that's what we did, and um, we're fortunate the shot didn't go in, but um, just make plays and give it our all. It's the last couple seconds we have, so um, just um, whatever we can do to win, that's, that's the goal. Have time for one last question. We'll stay on the extreme right in the back. Tyler, I know you said you were fortunate the shot didn't go in. Were you worried when it was in the air that it did go in, just with the way Walton's been going and everything that Michigan had been, been through? Um, I don't know about worried. I was just watching the ball in the air, hoping it didn't go in, and it and it didn't. Um, I was happy, and um, I was excited for us for to get back to this Elite Eight. And um, it was just um, ball watching, to be honest. All right, guys. We'll let you go back to the locker room. Congratulations on your victory, and we will see you tomorrow.